Susan Sweevelover, Z W I E F E L H O F E R. And I apologize for mispronouncing your name. That's okay. Uh, are you currently employed, ma'am? I am currently employed as a care provider, but I was previously employed with the City of Eau Claire as a police officer. All right. And how long were you employed by the City of Eau Claire as a police officer? Over 30 years. All right. And were you working for the City of Eau Claire as a police officer on March 22nd of 2018? Yes. All right. What were your duties as an officer with the police department? I'm a patrol officer. And were you a patrol officer on March 22nd of 2018? Yes. And uh, in, around shortly after noon, were you assigned to an investigation or a matter uh, by the police department? Yes. What were you assigned to or dispatched to? It was a check person and, and I was assisting. Okay. And where was that assignment? Where were you to go? Uh, it was in the 500 block of Cameron Street in the city of Eau Claire. Right. And was uh, I think you said you were assisting. Was there another officer assigned as well? Yes, Officer O'Neill preceded me to the scene. Okay. And that's Christopher O'Neill? Yes. All right. And uh, as you were going to the scene, did you, uh, or actually, let me preface that with, was your squad at that point in time equipped with a, a dash or a squad camera? Yes. All right. And as you were going to the scene, did you activate that camera? Yes. And does that camera uh, record just video or does it also record audio? It records video and, or, yeah, video and audio, All right. both. And at some point in time, can you switch the audio on and off on it? I don't believe so. Okay. All right. Uh, and did you activate that system as you were proceeding to the scene? Yes. All right. May I approach, Your Honor? You may. Uh, what has been marked for identification is exhibit number 161, uh, which is a disc. Does that contain your initials? Yes, it does. And did you review this disc to see if it was an accurate copy of your squad video from March 22nd of 2018? Yes. And is it? Yes. And Your Honor, I move the admission of exhibit 161. Any objection? No, Judge. All right, exhibit 161 will be received. And I'd ask to be able to play that at this point in time, and uh, counsel for the defense is kindly, since for some reason the audio is not working when it plays from mine, has agreed that it does work for some reason from his computer, so we'd ask that that be played at this point in time for the jury. All right. You may play the video. Thank you. And thank you, counsel. Yes. What did you see in her eyes, I guess?
How long ago was this? Say, um... Did that ever off the dictionary name information? Yes, you got all my stuff. Okay. This would have been... William 145, McClure's Captain Hedges. Uh, 10-ish. 1040. Okay, this morning? Yes. Okay. I, I was doing laundry and stuff. What coffee shop did she come into? Into Racy's. Okay. Go ahead. She looked like up fast or? Like... A little bit, like, yeah. Okay. When I talked to my friend, she picked up some art from him and they traded art and it's like, yeah, she gave me a vibe today, man. So like, well, she said she's going to do some errands and like, the little bit I talked to her, I was like, I don't know, this doesn't feel right. Something feels wrong. And I'm in the military and like I have super heightened awareness when it's to like situations like this. So I was like, okay, well, I have a 99% chance, or a 99% idea of what's going to happen, so. Okay. Everything's good. They're okay. Yeah, I'll take care of it too. Okay. No problem. Yeah, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Ms. Wiffelhofer, it appears that you uh, made contact initially and talked to essentially Mr. Mengel? Yes. All right. Uh, and during your conversation with Mr. Mengel, did he express any concerns or mention Alex Woodworth to you? He did not mention Mr. Woodworth, but he mentioned Ms. McCandless. Okay. Do you express any concerns about Ms. McCandless? Um, that she was acting strange. She just wasn't herself. And it appears from that you arrived on scene approximately what time? It was probably like 12.35, 12.40, somewhere in there. Okay. And left, it appears from that video, you were there what, how long? A couple minutes? Three to four minutes. Okay. And uh, then you left? Then I departed, yes. All right. Uh, and one thing I noticed, uh, the audio doesn't seem to come on right away. Is there a reason for that? Um, when you activate the recorder, the video and audio, it, there's like a two-minute section that it records just visually, just the video, um, before the actual audio kicks in. Okay. That's something that that's I just can't how explain the why. Yes. All right. That's just how the system works. Yes. It wasn't you were trying to keep audio up. Okay. No. Ms. Wiffelhofer, or Ms. Wiffelhofer, if uh, the video indicates 1250 is the end of it, would that be more accurate than your memory at this point in time? Correct. It would be over time would be on the video okay. itself. Thank you. Did you... Oh, I don't, I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Okay, cross-examination? Yeah, can I get my screen again up? Ms. Weifelhofer, did I get that correct? It's Sweevel over. It's close Sweevel enough. Hover. That is I want to get it right. That's fine. Can you give me one more try? It's Sweevel over. Sweevel over. Okay. Um, I want to ask you some questions about that day on March 22nd when you went to uh, the address on Cameron Street, okay? The, on the screen there is the what appears to be the beginning of the video, is that correct? Correct. And that uh, current time on there says 12 hours, 46 minutes, and 51 seconds. Is that right? That's correct. And that would be the accurate time as to when that recording began on March 22nd, right? When you activate the recorder, it goes back a couple of minutes. Um, that's the way the city has it set up, so it records just the visual for a couple of minutes back. Maybe I wasn't clear. What I'm asking is, when that says current time, 1246.51, as you're sitting in your car, 
If you looked at your watch, it would show 12.46.51 at the same time that you're seeing this on the street. Agreed? Yes. Okay. That's all I was, it wasn't that complicated, I apologize. And then at the end here, uh, when we get to the end, it ends at, I believe it is 12.54.06. I'm just going to play the last two seconds to, oops, sorry. To get to the end. Does that end at 12 minutes, 50, 12 hours, 50 minutes, and 6 seconds? Is that right? According to that, yes. And that's, you, know, you have no reason to dispute the accuracy of that. Agreed? I do not. I have no control over any of that. My question is, you agree that that's the actual time on that day? You don't dispute the accuracy of that time, do you? According to that, no. I'm, I, I don't understand why you're saying according to that. My question is, do you think it's a different time than 12 hours, 50 minutes, and 6 seconds? I can only go by what I see on the screen up there. Okay. So that's what I would have to say according to that, yes. All right. Um, you were called, as you said, to uh, check person. Is that right? Correct. And you came to find out that the person that you were actually checking on was Jason Mangle, right? Correct. And that's who you had contact with was Jason Mangle, correct? I did not know that that was his name at the time because I did not ask him his name because the other officer had already obtained his information. But the person you had contact with, you now know as you sit there today, was Jason Mangle, correct? Correct. And if I move the... I'm going to turn the volume off because I don't think we need to hear anything at this point. I'm just trying to show pictures. <coughs> Person to the left of the screen there, is that the way over on the corner? Can you see him? Maybe that's not the best view. I'm going to play for, I'm going to play about 10 seconds here from 124721. Started at 1247.10. And I paused it at 1247.22. Do we see somebody away from the car walking towards what I think is considered a fat bike? Do you see that person? Yes. Is that Jason Mangle? Yes. And he's walking towards a bicycle, is that right? Yes. And that's more of him there, right there, where we see Jason Mangle, correct? Yes. And the reason that you were there was because there was a call about what Jason Mangle was doing there at that house, right? Yes. And you came to learn that Jason Mangle told you the woman in the car was his ex-girlfriend, right? Correct. And he told you, I think you'd said that she was not herself that day. Is that right? That's what he had said, yes. Did he tell you that the reason that he said she was not herself is she'd given away a painting that was symbolic to him of their relationship? Um, I recall that she had Did traded he... some artwork. Okay, but you didn't know what the artwork was. Agreed? I did not. You didn't know the significance of that artwork to Jason Mangle? He never explained it. And uh, all he said was, my ex-girlfriend was not acting like herself today, correct? Correct. And then he told you, did he tell you that the person on the other side of the car, do uh, you see the where the red dot is? Yes. Do you see that's a person? Does that appear to be a person to you? Yes. Do you know who that is? I did not. Did you later learn that that was Alex Woodworth? I pieced it together that it was him. So yes, you later learned it was him? I later did, yes. Um, did Jason Mengel tell you that Alex Woodworth was in a sexual relationship with his ex-girlfriend? No, he did not. He just told you that he was there checking up on Ms. McCandless, right? Correct. And as the video goes on, 
Uh, in here we can see Officer O'Neill uh, at the open door uh, to the car parked in the driveway. Is that right? Yes. And you learned that sitting in the driver's seat there was Ezra McCandless. Is that right? I later learned that, yes. Um, while you were, uh, as the video goes on here, I'm just going to play it again with no volume. Now what we're seeing is Alex Woodworth uh, on one side of the door, is that right? Yes. And uh, Officer O'Neill on the other side of the door, correct? Yes. And again, although we can't see it, you know from previous observations and later observations that Ms. McCandless is on the other side of Mr. O'Neill sitting in the driver's seat, right? Yes. And they're having a conversation? Yes. Officer O'Neill is a trained police officer just like you? Yes. Um, I imagine you go through lots of training in your job, right? Yes. You probably wanted to become a law enforcement officer because you wanted to help people. Yes. You wanted, uh, one of your concerns is safety, right? Correct. And I would imagine Officer O'Neill shares those same concerns based upon what you know of him, right? Objection calls for speculation. Sustained. Uh, I think you can ask, uh, I'm assuming he's going to be a witness, you can ask him directly. I will. Yes, thank you. Um, and while you were talking to Jason, you were also keeping your eyes, as is probably part of your role, on what Officer O'Neill is doing, right? On and off. Sure. I mean, you're, you're multitasking, and that's not always the easiest thing to do in any role, correct? Correct. But you're, you're certainly glancing over them, and you're not leaving them completely alone. Agreed? That'd be correct. And it appears as if he's having a conversation with two individuals who are cooperative. Agreed? Yes. Friendly. Yes. And in fact, at the end, I think when we heard, you could hear Ms. McCandless thanking you. Is that right? Yes. Um, and at the end, you heard uh, Officer O'Neill say, everything's OK. Yes. And you heard Officer O'Neill say, Everything's good. I think he said everything was okay. All right. Well, let's play that then and just uh, O'Neill turned to you in that video? Yes. And you saw him give you a thumbs up? Yes. And then you heard him say the words, everything's good? Yes, I stand corrected. He said everything is good. And that, it was a long time ago, right? Yes. Uh, and now as we're looking at the video here, we can see we have a clear shot uh, to the person in the driver's seat. Is that right? Yes. And I'm just going to play it again without the volume now to just uh, get another. I'm going to ask you some questions about Ms. McCandless when I'm done playing this portion, okay? You saw, uh, you watched that portion of the video I just played? Yes. Where we saw Ms. McCandless reach out and grab the driver's door and close it, is that right? Yes. Um, do you remember what she was wearing that day? I do not. I couldn't see that far into the vehicle. Would it refresh your memory, perhaps, to see a picture? Yes. Showing you what's been marked as 632. Does that appear to be the shirt that you recall her wearing that day? I could not see what she was wearing. Okay. Fair enough. And at this point in the video, at 1249.32, I can't see Mr. Woodworth. Can you see him? Is he observable? I do not see him. Um, I'm going to play because I want to ask you some questions about him, okay?
So we just watched approximately the last 30 seconds of that video. Is that right? Approximately. And during that time, you saw Mr. Woodworth uh, was at the front of the vehicle, and he walked over to the passenger side near the front passenger door. Is that correct? Yes. And then he stopped and turned and looked over the roof of the car. Is that right? I guess I'd have to review the video. I didn't look at it that closely. All right. We can do that. You see that where I've paused it there? Can you see him there? I can see his, I can see his head. Okay. Let me press play and maybe it'll clear it up. So I paused it there. What we saw is Ms. McCandless had the door open to her car. Is that right? Yes. Officer O'Neill walked back after talking with you, got into his car and drove off, right? Yes. During that time, Mr. Woodworth walked from the front of the car to the passenger side of the car, correct? Yes. It appears as if he walked around to perhaps open the door. Agreed? I do not know if the door was open or closed for him. Fair enough. Uh, and then you see him uh, turn and look across back towards the camera over the top of the car. Is that right? Yes. And it's during that same time that the man with the bicycle approaches the car, correct? Yes. And that man's Jason Mengel. Yes. And it appears when you're driving off, that Jason Mangel and Alex Woodworth are having some conversation. Is that correct? I'm not sure. Okay. And again, I understand you're not sure, but would you agree that it appears as if they are speaking to each other? I can say they're looking at each other. I don't know if they're talking to each other. Okay. And in the middle of those two men is Ezra McCandless. In the vehicle, yes. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Any redirect? Yes, uh, briefly. Uh, Ma'am, anything uh, during the time that you were at that scene that caused you to be concerned about the interaction between any of the individuals there? I didn't have no concerns. All right. And uh, as we... See this last, went through this last 30 seconds. You can flip off now. I, I'm not going to use it anymore. As you uh, were there those last 30 seconds that we just saw a couple times uh, where there, at least you can see that Mr. Mengel and uh, Mr. Woodworth are looking at each other. Anything that happened during that time frame that concerned you? No. All right, any recross within Just, that scope? You had no concerns at all, correct? At that time, no. And that's why you drove off, leaving the three of them there in the driveway? Yes. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, Ms. Uh, Smeagol over. Uh, you may step down. I hope I got your name right that time. Thank you. It's not an easy name to pronounce, by the way. Thank you. Is she released from her subpoena? Okay. Yes, Your Honor. You're good. You're good to go. Thank you. All right. You ready with the next witness? <laughs> Could you uh, tell us your name, please, and spell your first and last name for the court reporter? It's Christopher K R I S T O P H E R. Last name is O'Neill. O apostrophe N E I L L. And how are you employed, sir? I'm a police officer with the City of Eau Claire. How long have you been employed with the City of Eau Claire? Twenty-two and a half years. And do you have any specific assignment uh, or duties with the? Eau Claire Police Department. I'm currently assigned to the patrol division as a road patrol officer. And did you have that same assignment on March 22nd of 2018? Yes, I did. Were you working on that day? Yes, I was. Uh, and 
were you dispatched at some point in time that day uh, in the, shortly after the lunch hour for any incidents? Yes, I was sent to a check welfare check person case on uh, Cameron Street in Eau Claire. And did you go to that scene? I did. All right. And uh, did you eventually end up near a residence located at 511 Cameron Street? Yes, I did. Right. And uh, approximately when did you arrive at that scene? I if you recall. I don't know the exact time, but it was shortly after noon. All right. And when you arrived at the scene, who's the first person that you had contact with? A gentleman by the name of Jason Mengel. And do you recall where you met with Mr. Mengel when you initially saw him? As I was pulling up to the location, he was walking uh, northbound across Cameron Street towards uh, the Montessori School. And I met with him uh, just well, a little bit northeast of that residence. Okay. And when you say that residence, you're talking about the residence at 511 Cameron Street? That's correct. And uh, did you have some discussion with Mr. Mengel at that point in time? I did. All right. After you had some discussion with Mr. Mengel, uh, where did you go? Then I went uh, across the street to the area of 511 Cameron and uh, met with two other individuals that had exited the house at 511 Cameron Street. All right. And uh, where, where were those individuals when you first saw them? Uh, they had been walking out of the house. Um, did they walk out at the same time? I believe so. All right. And uh, did you eventually identify who those two individuals were? I did. And who were they? Uh, an Alex Woodward and an Ezra McCandless. All right. And do you see the one that you uh, <laughs> identify or identified herself as Ezra McCandless in court here today? I do. She said. And well. could you point her up where she's seated and what she's wearing? She's sitting at the uh, defense table wearing a, a floral dress and a blazer. Ask the record to reflect the identification of the defendant, Your Honor. All right, the uh, witness, or, I'm sorry, the record will reflect the witness has identified Ms. McCandless. Did you discuss with uh, Mr. Woodworth uh, how things were, if there were any problems? I asked both subjects if everything was okay and he told me that they were. All right, and did you also ask the defendant if everything was okay? I did. And what was her response? She said that everything was okay as well. All right, did she express to you when you were talking to her any concerns with being with Alex Woodworth? No. Did the defendant eventually enter any vehicles? I believe they both entered a silver Chevy that was parked in the driveway. All right. And do you recall where the defendant got into that vehicle? Which which seat? I don't recall. Okay. The defendant uh, tell you whether or not she uh, wanted to continue to have contact with uh, Alex Woodworth. I don't believe she specifically said anything like okay. that. That's fine. Uh, as you were heading to this scene or arriving at the scene, did you, uh, was your squad equipped with a, a squad camera or a dash, dash camera? Yes. All right. And did you activate that camera at that point in time? Yes. All right. You may. Officer O'Neill, I'm showing you what has been marked for identification as exhibit number 162, which is a DVD disc. Uh, it appears to have some initials on it. Are those your initials? Yes, they are. And did you review this disc uh, to compare the contents of the disc with your dash camera from March 22nd of 2018? Yes. And is this an accurate copy of the, that dash camera? Yes. All right. Your Honor, I move the admission to Exhibit 162. 
and ask again to play that. And again, defense counsel has been kind enough to agree to play it from this computer since we are having problems with our sound from ours. Any okay. objection? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Exhibit 162 will be received and... Uh... Thank you, Council. Did you talk to me this morning? And said they saw. And said they saw you park your bike over here. Yeah. And then walk over there, look yeah. around in that car. Do you know that person that lives That's there? My, it's my girlfriend's car, or okay. my ex-girlfriend. We're kind of in a situation and. And she talked to me this morning because the guy that lives there is involved in an assault case that she's with. Or, or I mean, she's the victim of? She's the victim of an assault that happened. And when she went to him for consolement, I was gone on military orders. Okay. She went to him to talk to him about stuff, and then he kind of took advantage of her, too, and she wanted to talk to him, I think, today about some stuff. And I was paranoid because she had, like, fire in her eyes. Okay. So I... Who's, who's the girlfriend? Ezra McCandless. Okay. I was just worried because, like... Was the door standing open over there when you got there on I knocked, the car? I knocked, like, three times. I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear a scuffle or okay. anything. So, knock, knock, yelled, opened the door, and I heard her say, let him help you. Let him help you. So then I said, hey, is everything okay? Is everyone all right right now? I mean, I'm a medic in the military, so, like, I was paranoid. I was paranoid that someone was going to do something irrational. And okay. And they're in the house on the corner here, or yeah, they're on. The, I think they're fine, though. I mean, I don't okay. know. I'm, I'm just. I just saw the door to the car was standing open too. Was yeah, open I wanted to turn her car off. Her car was running, so that's why I was like worried because it was running, and I was like, okay, uh, what's going on? Like, what's going on? Is everything okay? Okay. Do you have any ID with you? Yeah. One of headquarters is ten two. Sorry. Jason, you live in town? Roger that. Okay. Just worried. I don't think he's dangerous, but I don't know. Do you know what his name is? Alex, Alex Woodsworth. Okay. Or Wood, Woods, yeah, I think it's Woodsworth or Woodsworth. Uh, April 6, 84. Roger that. You mind if I grab my bike quick? Uh, just give me your address here and a phone number, and then we'll let you head out for now. Oh, I'm not going to head out. I'm, I'm just you, going. you can head over there. Okay. And I'll go and check on them. What's your address? Uh, 135 Broadway Street, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And a phone number? 715-225-0220. Okay. You can go over by your bike. kind of worried because they saw Jason come over here and yeah. he was going in the car and they weren't sure what yeah. was going on. No, no. everything's fine. Everything's Just, fine? Yeah. Okay. Do you guys have any idea with you? Just, yeah. yeah. I got to write a report here that I came over and talked oh, with you guys. Um, 
they were just a little worried because they saw the car running over here and they weren't sure what was going on yeah. and all that jazz. You want to just slide it out of there? I don't want to take your wallet from you. I have this, and I'll find my license. Okay. Okay? Sorry. That's okay. It's in here somewhere. I just always have trouble finding it. That's not it. Does that work for an ID? Yep, that's fine. Okay, I'm sorry. My license is somewhere in here. That's okay. You know? I just usually have it. Uh, one one on ninety four. That's an easy birthday to remember, huh? It really is. <laughs> Alex, what's your phone number? Uh seven one five. Uh huh. Two two zero seventy six eighty five. Okay. And you live here? What's the address, sir? Uh five eleven Cameron Street. Sorry for all this, like, It's okay. Emotion. It's okay. I'd I, rather come here and check and it be yeah. nothing than have something bad happening. Uh, Ezra, where do you live? I live 36794 25th Avenue. Is that Chip one? That's Stanley, Wisconsin. Okay. And a birthday, Ezra? October 6, 1997. And a phone number for you? Um, currently, it would be a house phone, if that's okay. Yep. 715-644-5100. Okay. There you Thank go. You. you guys are good to go. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. We're good to go. Everything's good. They're okay. Yeah. Everything's fine. I'll take care of it, too. Okay. No problem. All right. Yeah, have a good day. Thank you, man. A couple questions. Uh, Officer O'Neill, after reviewing that, during the course of your contact with the defendant, did she ever indicate or tell you that she had a concern about being with Alex Woodworth? No. And uh, you asked for her ID initially? Yes. What did she give you? She said, uh, see if this is okay. I don't recall exactly right. what she it provided. It was not a driver's license, though? Uh, no. All right. And she said she wasn't finding her driver's license when she... Was she looking in the car? I believe so. All right. And when you talked initially to uh, Jason Mengel, did he, under, did he tell you that he had some concerns about how the defendant was looking that day. Yes. What did he tell you? I believe he said she looked like she had fire in her eyes. And that was the first thing he told you about why he was concerned? It was one thing he told me. I, I don't recall in order. When uh, you were leaving, where was the defendant at that point in time? She was with Mr. Woodworth on, uh, by the car in front of the house. All right. Do you recall if she was in the if she was in the driver's seat of the car? I don't recall. All right. Nothing further for uh, Officer O'Neill, Your Honor. Thank All right. you. Cross examination. Thank you. Uh, Mr. O'Neill, you had a chance to watch the recording the same time we did, right? Yes. And you've watched that before in preparation for today? Yes. Um, in the recording, did you see that there was a current time on the bottom of the recording? Yes. And it's approximately 1245 to 1250. That sounds correct. Um, and that's, that's the actual time that that was done, correct? Correct. Um, you left at about... I think the end of the tape is 12.49 and 44 seconds. That sounds correct. Okay. Um, and the reason you were there is you had a check person, right? Correct. And the check person 
turned out to be Jason Mangle, correct? Yes. And as you drove up to this address that you were told to check on a person, you saw a person matching the description. Is that right? Yes. And so that's why you pulled over and spoke with Jason Mangle, correct? Correct. Because you'd heard that there was a man matching Jason's description that was going in and out of a parked car at the residence? Yes. That he was going up to the door, is that right? Yes. Maybe entered the house? Yes. And wandered around on the outside, uh, the outskirts of the house before that? Possibly. Okay. Um, but the reason you were there is somebody was doing something at that house that matched the description of Jason Mangle, right? Yes. And so then you saw, as you, as you do in your police work, you saw someone matching that description, so you stopped to speak with him, correct? Correct. Um, you've been a law enforcement officer for quite some time, I imagine? Yes. A lot of training? Yes. Uh, imagine one of your uh, probably uh, reasons to get into law enforcement was to help people. Yes. To protect people, correct? Correct. Um, and so when you get a call like this, you're uh, motivated to make sure everybody's safe. Is that right? Correct. Um, so you went and you spoke with Jason Mengel to figure out what's going on, correct? Yes. And you learned that he was there because his ex-girlfriend's car was parked in the driveway, correct? I learned that he went there to check on her. He, and he went there to, he knew she was there because her car was there, correct? Is that what he told you? I'm not sure how he knew she was there. Okay. Um, but at some point he told you he was there because his ex-girlfriend was Objection, there. Objection, Your Honor, misstates the video. In fact, he describes in the video it's his girlfriend. That's what he says in the video. Well, it's uh, the video is what it is. Yes. Here, let me just play the video back from the beginning here, and we can um, sure. say what he says, starting at 12.43.38. Hopefully. The guy that... Yeah. Look around in that car. Over here, yeah. and then walk over there, look yeah. around in that car. Do you know that person that lives that's there? My, that's my girlfriend's car, or okay. my ex-girlfriend. Kind of innocent. He at first said, that's my girlfriend's car, and then he corrected himself and said, my ex-girlfriend, correct? Correct. He made clear to you that that's his ex-girlfriend, right? Yes, that's the last thing that he said. Correct. And he didn't correct that. Correct. Uh, and he said he was, she was there speaking with another man. Is that right? Yes. Um, he told you... As we've gone through, I think the state has gone through a couple times, she had fire in her eyes, right? Yes. You recall her saying that, or him saying that about her, right? Yes. So I imagine one of the things that you did as a trained law enforcement officer looking to make sure people are safe and to protect them is you investigated that. Correct. You went and spoke with her. Correct. You stood face to face with her. Correct. From a short distance away. Yes. You made observations of her face. Yes. You made observations of her eyes. Not specifically, but yes, I, I took a general overall sure. look at her appearance. Sure, and as general, when you're speaking with another human being, you have good eye contact, right? Correct. Just as we're doing right now, you're looking at me in my face and my eyes, right? Correct. Probably did the same when you spoke with Ezra on that day, is that right? Yes. And you're making, again, observations of her entire demeanor, right? Yes. Um, and at the end, based on your training, in your experience and what you saw that day, you determined everything's good. Correct. You obviously didn't see fire in her eyes. Agreed? Agreed. Um, when you spoke with her, uh, you would agree, as we watched on the video, she was cooperative. Yes. Um, she was actually apologetic. Yes. I think we heard her apologize to you in that brief period of time at least three times. Is that right? Yes. Um, did not seem aggressive in any way, shape, or form. Agreed? Agreed. Um, and at the end, we know she was thankful. Correct. She said thank you, correct? Yes. Cooperative, apologetic, polite, thankful. Those would all describe her, correct? Yes. In an otherwise normal appearance. Yes. Do you recall what she was wearing that day for clothing? I do not. Would it perhaps refresh your memory if I showed you a picture? 
It may. Okay. Showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 632. Do you recognize that article of clothing? I do not. Okay. Have you watched, uh, and I'm going to probably mispronounce her name, Ms. Swipe Hover? Have you watched her recording? I have not. Okay. Um, your recording, as we just saw, doesn't show Ms. McCandless in it. Agreed? Correct. It doesn't show Mr. Woodworth in it. Agreed? Correct. Um, in your preparation for this, did anybody ever show you the recording which actually shows Ms. McCandless and Mr. Woodworth? No. Those are the only questions I have. Thank you. All right. Any redirect? Yes, Your Honor. A few things. Uh, can we start again at uh, 1243.25 and continue sure. until I tell you to stop? Sure. Thank you. Might start before that. I'm not. And said they saw you park your bike over here yeah. and then walk over there, look yeah. around in that car. Do you know that person that lives That's there? It's my girlfriend's car, or okay. my ex-girlfriend, we're kind of in a situation, and when she talked to me this morning, I was because the guy that lives there is involved. All right. Uh, so after he says, uh, girlfriend, uh, ex-girlfriend, he then says we're kind of in a situation? Correct. All right. Now, uh, prior to March 20, you can turn off now, I'm done with that. Prior to March 22nd of 2018, had you ever met the defendant previously? No. So, do you know for how she looked was different than how she would normally look? No. While you were speaking with Alex Woodworth, I assume, were you making observations of him as well? Yes. All right. Uh, can you tell us what, if anything, about him that uh, uh, concerned you? Nothing. Did you, can you tell us whether or not you observed Alex Woodworth at any point in time act in an aggressive manner? He did not. Can you tell us whether or not you observed uh, Alex Woodworth act in any manner that appeared that he was angry, upset, or uh, potentially violent? He did not. Uh, can you tell us whether or not Alex Woodworth was uh, calm? Excuse me? Can you tell us whether or not Alex Woodworth was acting in a calm fashion? He was. Can you tell us whether or not Alex Woodworth was cooperative? He was. By the way, uh, when... Uh, the defendant was looking for her license. Do you recall if she opened up the uh, center console of the vehicle? I don't recall if she did. Okay. Fair enough. Nothing further. Thank you. Okay. Any recross? Just briefly. Um, as you said, you didn't know Ms. McCandless at all, correct? That's my knowledge, no. You didn't know Mr. Woodworth at all? No. Um, you were what we would call an objective observer, correct? Correct. You, she's not your ex-girlfriend, right? No. You had no uh, emotion involved at all in your decision, right? Correct. You're just there to make observations as an objective, neutral, <coughs> trained officer, correct? Correct. Thank you. All right. Uh, you may step down. Thank you, Officer Thank you. Neal. And is Officer Neal, I assume, would be released from the subpoena? He may be, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, Officer. You have a good day.